here at NAMM 2020 here with Greg Penny. Uh, Greg, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? So I am a producer, mixing engineer, immersive enthusiast, uh, like those? serial Atmos mixer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm probably up over 200 songs now. Wow. Um, which is good. Um, started uh, with Elton's Rocket Man back a few years ago. And we've progressed forward through lots of different artists, um, including me going to the Vatican to record the Vatican Choir inside the Sistine Chapel. Amazing. Capture it in Atmos and mix it in Atmos. Yep. Fabulous experience. Um, Rolling Stones, Queen, Tears for Fears, more Elton. Um, I've been really lucky to work on a lot of great projects. And a lot of my mates are working on these things too. Giles Martin. Yep. Um, Steve Genoek, Nick at Capital, all the guys at Capital in Nashville and in London at Abbey Road. Great team, happy to be involved. Awesome. All right, so Rocket Man, let's talk about that. It's a track that everyone loves. Tell us how that, that came about. The, um, I had been doing working on Elton's uh, catalog for 5.1, and um, when Atmos emerged, um, Andy Nelson at Fox brought me over to Fox one day and played me some stuff in his room that he was working on for a film. Mm -hmm. And he said, Greg, you should really take this technology and do something in the music space with it. I'm like, well, you know, how am I gonna do that? What am I gonna do? So he introduced me to Brian Pennington at Dolby. I met Brian, um, told him I had some Elton multi-tracks, I'd like to do a test. We went to Burbank, to the to the Dolby room there. And he suggested we start with Rocket Man. So I give kudos to Brian for, for suggesting that. We started with Rocket Man. I had prepped the tracks in my studio at home, gotten them ready for the Atmos sort of panning and delivery. We did it all in one day. And uh, the, impa the impact of that track, I think, over the years, people listening to Atmos is wonderful. Just that stun gun effect, you know? I've got you. <laughs> and then release after it's over and everybody always goes, oh my God. Um, and it's a great win for Elton too, because he's always encouraged the people that he collaborates with to do more, to do something new, to make it special, to bring it, you know, bring it into the now. Yep. And, uh, you know, when he, when his team heard that and when he eventually heard it and other tracks that we've done of his, he said, I want my whole catalog done that way in Atmos. That's a big one. So, right. And that's been keeping you busy. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of a ton of Elton stuff. Right. Uh, working through greatest hits things and then and then starting to do entire albums. So I've done Yellow Brick Road. I've done Mad Men Across the Water. I'm starting on Captain Fantastic. And uh, and then I did a whole selection of the Diamonds album, which are the, the singles. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of Elton work to be done and uh, a lot more new things because he'll be recording more. You know, I often think I describe Rocket Man as like a big audio hug. It yeah. just kind of the, yeah. the, the quiet. It's it's great. I mean, when you when you go into a mix, obviously Rocket Man was your first one. But yeah. now, when you're going into a mix, how are you thinking about some of the different ways that you can use the Atmos technology? I look for a way that that you can unfold, sort of like an audio origami. You can unfold the track so that it has impact as it unfolds. There's a lot of pop tracks that sort of start on stun and stay there. Mm -hmm. So you've got to find a way to make that. Um, that work in an immersive environment. Because a lot, a lot of those work better it's either in mono or stereo, coming at you hard from one direction. So that's a challenge to, full, to, to bring them out. But the tracks that unfold like that, like Rocket Man, where you've got, you've got a concentration on the lyric and the vocal in the front, the piano, and then things build and then come back down again, it's a, it's a really, really effective way to work in Atmos. So I look for those things when I first put up a track. Is there anything that I can sort of do the Rocket Man thing with? Um, but in general, we've got so many different kinds of things that we've been working on. You just try to find the thing that makes the emotion come out in the track. Right. That's that's what I look for. And you've um, you've outfitted your studio at home. Well, not yes. quite at home, but not far from home. Yes. yes. So, and well, you've been there. I have been there. So uh, tell me about it. What have you got there? So we have um, a 7.1.4 uh, 7 room uh, that is small in a uh, in a in a building with a film company that I rent from, and it's uh, it's where we started a couple of years ago. And then recently we uh, added a second room that is actually uh, an experiment in how to create a pop-up room. 
um, with lighting truss and recycled cotton panels that hang on bungee cables and make a room so you could essentially put it up in a day and have a full Atmos studio rocking you know, by the end of the day. So we have two rooms working full time, um, mixing for the, uh, the, uh, the whole immersive initiative that's out there right now. It's great. It's wonderful. Awesome. Yeah. How are you feeling about the, um, obviously we've got devices like the um, Echo Studio. Yep. How's that been taking these mixes and seeing how they're translating to all these It's been fantastic. We, we had the good fortune, of course, via Dolby of being able to work with Amazon on on what they wanted to hear. We, we, we did a lot of tests. We did a lot of playing, playing things blind and checking stuff out. Uh, it was very helpful to speak to them in depth about what they had hoped to achieve with that device and then use the device almost as a QC device for our own mixes. And it's really enlightening. It's, it's, it's worked very well. What's really gratifying is when you, you, you know, you've done a mix and then eventually it gets down to the, to the Echo Studio, for example, and it is still immersive and wonderful. And you just think, ah, oh, it's fantastic. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Elton. Yeah. You said you've mixed about 200 tracks now. Yeah. Curious about some of the other artists and kind of other mixes that you've worked on. We did. Uh, well, going back to the to the uh, Vatican Choir thing, we did a thing a year and a half ago where we we uh, filmed a performance that was done for the bishops in the Vatican of the Vatican Choir singing a Christmas program in the Sistine Chapel, and we were lucky enough to have Cecilia Bartoli come in the wonderful Italian mezzo-soprano come in and be the soloist for one of the songs. A 12th century piece uh, and an older bit of goodie. Uh -huh. But we captured the whole thing in Atmos and we placed the mics in the position that we thought it would work best for unfolding when you're listening in a room. And it is like you're in the Sistine Chapel. That was an incredible gig. Uh, I've worked on classic Rolling Stone stuff Steve Jenowick and I remixed the Stones Rock and Roll Circus uh, film. Um, I worked on Sting's solo stuff, uh, the police stuff, uh, classic Motown. Um, I just worked on No Doubt. Oh, cool. Fabulous. Yeah. Um, in our second room, my son Felix is mixing now, and uh, he's just done the, the entire Katy Perry Teenage Dream album for the 10th anniversary. And that's incredible. It's been 10 years? Yeah. Wow. 10 years. Great album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, even better in Atmos. It's mind blowing in Atmos. Really good. Great pop. Atmos works great for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's. So you said your, your son's just started mixing. I'm kind of thinking now, again, back to, to your very early days mixing in Atmos. Yeah. It was still even pretty early in the cinema at yeah. that point. Yeah. So. How have you seen the tools and workflows evolving since those early days when it was sort of all a bit prototyping? Yeah, it was it was complex then. It was complex routing, and you had to think things through really clearly so that you didn't make any routing you know routing errors or mistake busing errors mistakes. Um, but the way it's improved is it's been leaps and bounds, and really, really, I have to say, thank you for listening and for giving us the ability to give you input on the on the tools. Because, journey. I mean, because it's, it's, the tools, in this. Yeah. you know, I, I find I'll open up a new version of the renderer and I'll and I'll go, wow, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. And now there's more and more, uh, you know, with with working in Pro Tools and working in the renderer, there's more collaboration between the two companies on developing how their devices work together, and it's just seamless and wonderful now. That's and I'm right. sure even with. Uh, Rumor has it there's even better things coming. So uh, I'm thrilled because we have a really busy year ahead of us. Obviously in your studio it's amazing, but then this is all about consumers and fans getting that experience. It is. When you're mixing, I mean, what is it you want the consumers to take away from this, these immersive mixes and this experience? That's a really good question because it's, it's sometimes you, you, you approach mixing as a technical endeavor. You want to make sure that things are technically very, you know, perfect. But it's it's the emotional impact that you can achieve using Atmos, and that's apparent in Rocket Man. The takeaway for the listener is so important to me. I try to find where that emotion is in the in the track, in the song, so that the machine kind of goes away, and you're 
lost in the song. And it's and it works from our big, you know, giant uh, power and glory Atmos playbacks all the way down to the consumer devices and binaural headphones. Um, you gotta find that emotional connection for the listener so that they're moved by it. Or, or you know, they wanna get up and dance, or they wanna, you know, they, or, they, or they hear it the way they've never heard it before. And they do often hear it the way they've never heard it before. Every single time I play an Atmos track back for someone who knows, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a song you've heard a thousand times, and they always say, I never heard it like that. I never heard that stuff. So hopefully it's about that's the what music. We, yeah, it's about the music and how it touches people. Yeah. That's it at the end of the day. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. You're Great to see you. Yeah.